Rex, we're standing here in the middle of horse manure. Yeah. I feel at home. <laughs> you know, I never had horses. I have. A lot. Okay. If you don't remember my friend Rex, uh, we did some trenching on his property the other day. And then Rex came over a little bit later and helped me with some box blade work. Oh my goodness. He knows how to use a box blade. And what we need to do here today, Rex, is there was mud, water, last time I was here, water standing in here, and it, it just will not drain. So we're going to have to create them a, a surface drain out here across their pasture. Okay. We're going to use Johnny 2 and Johnny to see if we can achieve that. Stay tuned. I decided to get started by just tilling a single pass right down through where we wanted to put the swale. I figured it'd be best to go ahead and lay out that path first thing so we both understood our goal. Where Rex is right now and just in front of him, it's a little bit higher, maybe two or three inches higher than where the camera is. Then it's roughly level down to Johnny. There's a lot of fall, probably a foot or more between the two Johnnies right here. So most of our work will happen up at this end. I tilled this one pass in this direction and then I realized that the wind was just strong enough to make that dust hang right over me for the whole pass. I decided that was enough of that. You might be noticing the canopy on Johnny. This particular canopy came from Artillion.com and from now till the end of August at least you can get a $50 discount with coupon code TTWT. We did a thorough review of this canopy as well as the rhino hide canopy in our previous episode. Go check it out. Here's the horses that are actually usually in the other pen where the tractors are working. They're having a nice breakfast. At their farm here, they have a wedding venue, so an old barn and an outdoor chapel. It's really pretty. This project quickly became one of repetition and persistence. We both just kept making big circles, pushing the dirt down the hill a little bit at a time. As I mentioned earlier, Rex has a ton of experience on a box blade, and it shows. I thought he might want to put the teeth down and dig a little more aggressively with it. But as we discussed it off camera, he really liked working behind the tiller. So we just kept working with that approach. I found that when I pushed with my blade, I had to go a lot slower. Well, Rex was wanting to go pretty fast. He was able to get his box filled up, take it all the way down, and dump it pretty quickly. So I had trouble deciding whether using the 4-in-1 blade style here was actually benefiting or if I should just stick to tilling and let him do all of the dirt moving. In reality, it probably doesn't matter. We don't have to be the most efficient possible, but there's something about us guys that we really want to try to come up with a more efficient approach to solve any problem, right? I found it a little more difficult to smoothly distribute uh, the load that I pushed with the blade. I noticed that Rex did a fabulous job spreading the excess soil with his box blade. You would think he had the box full, but as he kept going, it would just keep filling up a little bit more in front. Of course, Johnny too handled that five foot box with no problem at all. Tough Line provided this box blade and several other dirt moving attachments for our use. You can check out their website at monroetoughline.com. Use the find a dealer link to see if there's a dealer near you. Rex is a master with that box blade, and uh, I'm not really sure what I need to be doing. I don't think we've got it quite deep enough yet, and maybe not quite wide enough yet, so I think there's a lot more to do, but, uh, and I also think the tiller's helping. I think it's making it easier for him to use the box blade. Now we have the teeth up. 
uh, mainly because with the tiller, he's able to, to get a hold of all the dirt he needs. So, yeah, he can get a box full really quick of loose dirt that I've filled up. I find it quite fascinating to see how different people think differently. Even if I were going to use the box blade, I would still be using my loader bucket to try to carry maybe two loads of dirt each time. But when I watch him, he's pretty efficient with just the box. Even though he's got to make multiple trips like that, it still seems pretty efficient. Persistence pays. I think you can see the makings of a nice gentle swale there already. We could do some of it just by eye, but it's probably far enough along now that we need to get the laser set up. I'm going to use this as a reference point right here. It seems to be kind of the lowest place. I want this out here to be about four inches lower than that. I don't know if four is enough, but that's where I'm going to start. And uh, then we'll put some slope in the laser down to the end and see, see how that, that comes out as well. With my laser level, you have to set up the slope manually. So after I get the calculations all in my head properly, hopefully, I set the receiver to the desired height at the end of the swale. Then, Christy and I work together to adjust the slope on the transmitter until it hits that receiver height. Hope it makes sense. I think we both find this setup a little bit stressful, but we're thankful to have a laser that supports slope at all, even manually. Most of the others in this price range did not support this feature. You can check out the, all the pieces of our laser level system at our Amazon store. Amazon.com slash shop slash Tractor Time with Tim. Yet another project to evaluate the effectiveness of these tires. They were fabulous in these conditions. It wasn't extremely muddy, so they stayed clean. And they really seemed to get good traction, so we were definitely happy with them here. It looks like something's wrong with the left headlight. It's actually not. I had had an oil leak. One of the loader hoses had worked its way loose and squirted oil on the front there. And That's just where the dust is collected on that oil. Need to get it washed up, Tim. I think Rex and me were both having a wonderful time. I really enjoy working together with another tractor, especially with different attachments, different sizes. It gives some interesting challenge about 
well, how can we be most efficient? Christy talked a little bit about the wedding facility at this property. The owner of this property is a good friend of ours and is a minister at the church we used to attend in Carmel. Sort of like Christy and I, he and his wife are following this dream. And so far, the success is astounding. Check out their website at whitewillowfarms.com. It's a great story. Now, when they started this, they knew they needed a little tractor. He eventually settled on a 2032R, the second generation, just like Johnny Two here. And he got a rear blade, a loader, and maybe another attachment or two. I can't remember exactly. The owner couldn't be here while we were doing this work, and it's sort of disappointing in retrospect because when I followed up after the fact to see if he was happy with the work, he said he just couldn't envision how a tractor the size of his could have done this. Of course, you longtime viewers know that it's just persistence and repetition, as we discussed earlier. Just keep working at it, and you'll eventually get it done. Up here around this barn, I'm kind of glad I didn't have a larger tractor. Obviously, Johnny Five could have moved more dirt faster, but he would have had a hard time navigating right in here around this barn. These little guys worked really well. I would have also had transportation issues. If I'd have brought Johnny Five, I couldn't have brought any other rig at the same time, so it would have been multiple trips. And this is 45 minutes from my house now. One more complication is that I don't have a nice big box blade or any rear attachment for Johnny Five that would help with dirt moving. Okay, all those are just excuses. You guys know that I just enjoy working with the smaller tractors. And I think a lot of you enjoy watching the smaller tractors, too. needs dressed up when we get done. Yeah. It's amazing to me that we're still not down here. I mean, we have cut and cut and cut on this. Yep. We're not close here. You go down. Yep. Now you can begin to see Johnny lean now. We've cut enough out of there. One item that would have helped us on this project would have been a laser receiver on the back of the box plate. In theory, we could just have a metal stake sticking up attached to the box and use our magnetic receiver on it. But I am a little nervous about that because when I see the box blade drop suddenly, it seems to jar it quite a lot. I'm afraid the receiver might fall off. Rex mentioned off camera that these slopes have to be really gentle. It's pretty easy for a horse to get all tripped up here. So he encouraged me to make it a little bit wider. A little bit more here. Back to about here. This is about good. From here down to here, and then it's too deep in the orange spot there. But from here, all this, I think I've tilted a little bit. About there. It's right about here. Okay. In the lowest spot here. And then, this, this stays all pretty good. Until we get down about there. So that's almost right on. And then it, it comes up a little bit. So we need to cut some more. Okay. Getting almost there, Rex. Rex has patience and an attention to detail that I really enjoy working with. He wants to get it done right, and he doesn't rush.
And since he has those qualities, it makes me feel more confident and, well, seeking perfection. We spent the last hour or hour and a half on this project simply working at the detail, making sure that we had a consistent slope all the way from one end to the other, and cleaning up the sides to make it look nice. So we're just setting the final grade here. Now, what I mean is the deepest part of the trench here is where we want the grade. The soil is pretty hard right here, and uh, I haven't tilled this this deep, so we don't have the teeth down on this. So not having the teeth down on the box blade makes it not cut as much. Now that we've got that final grade established, I try not to till right in the middle of the ditch. Rather, we're working on the sides to get those smoothed up and, well, just to finish everything up. We decided to cut this back just a little bit so that the water from this side of the barn would flow into our new soil. I, I think I need one more time on this side. And then I'll, then I'll be happy, I think. I want you to be happy because you're the detail guy. <laughs> Always, you are a master with that box blade. Thank you. You know how to use one of those. I bet you've had a few hours in front of a box blade. I this turned out to be a little bit more of a job than I expected. I think we went a bit deeper out there. It worked good, though, I think. What we've done is we've taken all this area up here from kind of behind the camera almost at this point and put a gentle slope in it all the way down through there. The camera probably can see it. It won't look like this in a week. The horses will have it all tromped up, but it's going to drain. Yeah. Joel's got a... Uh, Himself. If he wants to do a little bit of work on getting the water to one of these, to this maker's well, he can do it. So thanks very much for joining us, Rex. Hey, glad to do it. Anytime. I think we have a new helper on Tractor Time with Tim. <laughs> what do you think about that, Christy? <laughs> hey, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. A whole bunch of farm cats. And here's the beautiful barn that's now a wedding venue. And the cat has followed me over here. No clawing my legs, kitty. <laughs>